you to do it. Okay, I've only been praying five minutes. I got 10 minutes more. Lord, this is what I want you to do. This is how I want you to do it. And this is when I want you to do it. Peace out. Peace out. Basically, we've gotten everything off our chest. It told the Lord exactly what we want. But we have not taken the time to listen to what he wants. If you could imagine with me, just for a few minutes, how many of you want to go on vacation sometime? What, what are some of your dream vacation spots? Hawaii. Hawaii. Singapore. Bora Bora. Y'all name the names I don't even know. Santorini, Greece. Where? Santorini, Greece. Santorini, Greece. Ooh, Lord, y'all been watching the Travel Channel. Y'all got all this. Yes, sir. Florida. Florida. Amen. I can drive there. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? Any, any place Aruba. else you want? Aruba. Aruba. Most of these places. Yes, sir, Zay. Tennessee. Tennessee. Okay, that's even closer. Thank you. We can go there. Um, most of these places you're mentioning are islands. We dream. We, we like to get away. We we. If we're honest with ourselves, we would love to sit out on a beach and just look at the ocean and, 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 and not have any worries or any cares. And what if, what if, what if the king told you that he was going to give you an island? What if he told you he was going to give you a tropical paradise, a place that would be all yours? And then he sent you to that tropical paradise all by yourself. Amen. And he gave you a few things. He gave you a two-way radio. He gave you an instruction manual. And he gave you all the tools and materials you needed to build your house, to build a city, to build your tropical paradise. And he told you when he was giving you those things, he said, I'm giving you, first of all, this manual. This manual has everything that you need. All the instructions are in this manual to build your paradise. And at the same time, I'm giving you a two-way radio. And see, I, I, I'm going to be talking to you, but I need you to be tuned in, dial it in to number 100. Because if you dial into another station, you may not hear me. You may hear somebody else. And if you don't tune it just right, you may hear a lot of static. Amen. And sometimes I'm going to be giving you instruction, but sometimes it may, you know, you may have some little turbulence and the, and the dial may get off of 100. You may start hearing somebody else's voice, but I'm telling you this, my son, my daughter, that you can always back up what I say in the manual that I've given you. So if somebody comes over your two-way radio and they're saying something that is contrary to the manual that I've given you, then you know that is not my voice. They may sound just like me. Amen. They may have the perfect baritone in their voice. Amen. The baritone that you've gotten used to. But if they're saying things that are contrary to the manual that I've given you, then it is not me. Wait a minute. But there may be some times when I don't even speak. You may be tuned in to channel 100. But that day I decided to rest and I'm not speaking but I've still supplied you with everything that you need. I still want you to get into this manual and read it and learn it, rehearse it, so that when you hear my voice and it lines up with the manual, you know it is me. And when you hear other voices, you are able to discern and know that it is not me. Amen. Amen. And I can hear the king telling this young man or young lady, if it is not tuned just right, and you're hearing static, don't allow those times of quietness and then those times of static for your mind and your imagination to run rampant. Don't allow you to begin to talk to yourself and think it's me talking. All right. All right. All right. But if you tune in enough time, and I want you to talk to me sometime too, I want you to push the talk button if you have a question. I want you to feel free to ask me a question day or night. I may not answer right away, but I will answer you. But when I come back on, I want you to listen to my voice so much that you learn how to discern what is my voice and what is the voice of somebody else. And here, if you follow my instruction manual to the T 
And if you learn to be in tune with my voice on channel 100 only, that means you're not turning to Hot 96. That means you're not turning to something else that is contrary to my word, but you're keeping your two-way radio tuned into 100 and you're hearing my voice. After a while, you're gonna begin to build up this home that you wanted. After a while, you're gonna begin to build up this paradise that your soul desires. And, and maybe you don't see the whole picture right now because the instructions don't make complete sense. You may read chapter one of the instructions and it does not tell you the end. It just tells you what to do in this situation. But if you continue to listen to me and if you continue to follow the instructions, you're going to see the big picture by and by. You're going to see that this house is going to begin to take form. You're going to see that the foundation is laid. You're going to see that I have all your colors picked out just to your liking. You're going to see that I got the carpet picked out just the way you like it. Matter of fact, you're going to see over this distance right here that I got the furniture picked out just like you like it. If you learn how to listen to me. Now some of y'all may still think I'm talking about a king and somebody that just wanted an island, but I'm talking about us today. Amen. 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 The king in this story is Jesus. Amen. Jesus is the voice that we need to learn how to listen to. Amen. The manual is none other than the Bible. Amen. The Holy Bible. Sometimes we're listening to things and we get off track because it's not backed up by the word of God. Amen. God, and you see, you can't let just anybody talk to you either. Because some people will come to you as, as a sheep in wolf's clothing. They'll come to you and they'll say they have a word for you. But if that word is not backed up by the word of God, if it's not backed up by the manual, they are, they are doing nothing more than deceiving you. See, the, the main trick of the enemy, see, he don't have much power. He has power, but his main device is deception. Amen. He comes in and he looks like what he's not. He presents things to you that look like or appear what they're not. He tells you things that sound like what they're really not. And he gets you because he deceives you. He, he deceives you into thinking that something that isn't is. Amen. He don't come to you in an obvious way. You know, some of us are looking for him. We, we know him. We know when he's going to come because he's going to do it like this. He's coming with a pitchfork. I, I've seen him on commercials. He's a little red man. He sits on the left shoulder, not the right, but he sits on the left shoulder because the white man with the white thing is only why got the white man over here. And the black man with the red suit over here. I don't know. But why? We expected him to come like that, but he does not come in any red suit. He does not come, hallelujah, looking like any kind of way. But he comes just like you like it. Right. Right. You like him tall, dark, handsome, that's how he's coming. You like him 24, 36, 30, whatever, 43. <laughs> that's how he's coming. Amen. Amen. You like it big, that's how he's coming. You like it small, that's how he's coming. You like it white, that's how he's coming. You like it black, that's how he's coming. He's been able to figure out your taste because you ain't hid your taste from him either. All right. Amen. You to put your taste all out on Facebook. Oh, right. Amen. And tweet it out your taste. <laughs> this is what I like. <laughs> if you don't look like that, I'm getting to reach it. Amen. So he slithers in just like you like it. And if you're not in tune with God's voice, if you're not in tune with the Holy Bible, his instruction manual, you can begin to think that that is a blessing. Yes. When it's really a curse wrapped up looking like a blessing. Yes. Hallelujah. So who is the builder in this story? The builder is you. The builder is you. And what is this paradise? that you're building. This paradise that you're building is your life. How can we hear if we don't take time to listen? Most of us have had communication issues. Most of our marriages, most of our homes experience communication breakdown. Most of our parent child relationships experience communication breakdown. Most of your friendships experience communication breakdown. Even in our church, when Brother George is trying to over-preach me, we're experiencing communication breakdown. Why is there a breakdown in communication? Most of the time, point at yourself, 
They say, because I'm not listening. I'm not listening. We counsel people sometimes, and we'll, we even use the, the analogy of the walk of the talking stick. It's not your turn to talk until you have the talking stick. You are forced to listen. You need to listen until you get the stick. But what we've learned, what me and my wife have learned, even in counseling, is that you're not listening even though you don't have the talking stick. Because as soon as you get the talking stick, you start spewing stuff out of your mouth that has nothing to do. What, what the person just said. So while they've been talking, even though your mouth has stayed shut, your mind has been turning 100,000 miles an hour trying to figure out how you're going to refute because you heard the first word they said and you didn't like it. But we don't take the time to listen. Here we are, we serve the great architect of the universe, as Deacon Mike puts it. We serve the great I am. We serve the king of kings. We serve the Lord of lords. Yet we don't want to take the time to listen to what he has to tell us. We're so busy trying to tell him what we want. Call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. If you want more power, tell him what you want. If you want the victory, tell him what you want. If you want a breakthrough, tell him what you want. And you'll get happy because you're talking to him in your own language and you're telling him what you want and you think he's hearing you. So we said, Pastor, why do people shout then when they tell him what they want? Amen. Because I'm talking to him with a spirit of expectancy, and I expect that he's going to regurgitate, and that's what it is, regurgitation. He's going to regurgitate back to me everything that I've taken that hour to spew into his ears. Uh-huh. And don't get me wrong, anybody that's trying to check me by the Bible, check me, always check me. Amen. Amen. But I'm not preaching this morning against praying and talking to God. No, you're not. What I'm simply trying to say is that our lives are off balance. All right. Amen. We spend far too much time talking and very, very little time listening. Right. In John the 10th chapter, the 27th verse, the 28th verse, Jesus had just given a parable about the sheep and about the shepherd. And, and he comes down here to the 27th verse and he says, my sheep hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. Wait a minute. My sheep hear my voice, and they know me, and they follow me. But if the sheep are spending all their time bad, 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 Yep, yep. Talk, talk. When do they learn to hear his voice? Because he did not say that I'm the shepherd and I'm out there and I'm yelling at you. Trying to get you in line. I'm screaming at you. Stay away from that cliff. I'm talking to you and I'm screaming and I'm yelling to the top of my lungs. No, he said I'm gently guiding you. I'm gently guiding you. I'm gently whispering to you. Remember when Isaiah, when, uh, not Isaiah, when Elijah, when he was looking for a sign from God, and, 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 the, and the Bible says that the thunder came and the thunder roared, and it's like, is that you? No, it's not me. And then the lightning struck. Is that you, Lord? No, it's not me. Then the rains and the storm came. And he said, after all that calmed down, he was able to hear the Lord in a still, small voice. Amen. We have to learn how to get quiet. Yes in order to hear him. He is speaking to us. He's speaking to us in your prayer time. He is speaking to you. He's trying to speak, but you're not hearing him because you're too busy talking. We are too busy talking, and we cannot learn his voice. So then when we find ourselves in a situation where things are quiet and we hear multiple voices, Uh uh we don't know which one is him because we've not trained ourselves and taken the time to learn his voice. My sheep hear my voice. And because they hear my voice, I know them. I know them. And another, because they hear my voice, another, a deceiver, another preacher who is preaching deception. Did I say that? Hallelujah. Amen. A, 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 A false prophet who is spewing out blessings everywhere without giving any warning. Amen. That is not the biblical definition of prophecy. Amen. Anytime a prophet appeared in the Bible, most of the times they were spewing out warning. If you do not get your life together, this is what is going to happen. 
Matter of fact, prophets had short lives. So if you knew that prophets really had short lives, there'd be very few people signing up for the office of prophecy. If they knew what they really had to do is stand up when nobody else is telling the truth and declare right. the truth right. in the midst of a bunch of lies, they wouldn't want to sign up for the job. Right. If they knew they had to go into churches filled with thousands of people and say something that would jerk the very hearts of those sitting in the pews, then they might not sign up for the job. Right. But see, it's easy to get up and spew out blessings. Yeah. It's easy to tell you that you're going to get this tomorrow and get that tomorrow and, and ain't even inquired about how you live. Wow. And then see, God, even, even in this, and I'm going to skip down real quick, because in Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, amen, this is after the children of Israel were sent off into captivity in Babylon, and they were there for 70 years. Even after all that, he said, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and plans not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Then, see, we stop there, we stop there, we'll say that, we'll shout that scripture out from the mountaintops. I know the plans God has for me, plans to prosper me, plans to give me a hope in the future, but if you read on the verse number 12, then you will call on me and come and pray to me. Wait a minute, there's some communication. Lord, I thought you just had me because I come to church. Lord, I thought you just had me because Grandma saved. I thought you had me because Papa was saved and, and, and everybody in my lineage. I come from a great lineage of preachers, so you automatically have me. And he said, no, I know the plans because then you will call upon me and will pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me. Woo! Yep, seek me. You will seek. What is the definition of seek? Does that mean to ask one time and I didn't hear nothing so I walk away? Does that mean to get discouraged because your prayer has not been answered the first time? Does that mean to walk away from God because somebody looked at you wrong? Amen. Seeking means it requires some perseverance. Seeking requires some breakthrough. Seeking requires when it does not feel good inside, I'm still going to seek. Seek requires even when the station is tuned to channel 100 and he's not talking right there. I'm not leaving, Lord until I hear yes, that's good. from you. You will seek me and, and find me when you seek me with all of your heart, not just your hand. Woo! That's what we seek with a lot of times. Give me. Give me. Give me. Do this for me. But he said, I don't want you to seek you with my hand. Mm -hmm. I want you to seek me with your heart. Yeah. What does that mean? I desire you to fall in love with me. Yes, yes. I desire you to desire me mm -hmm. more than you desire things. Yes, yes. I want you to desire me more than you desire the things that I can do for you. Right. He can do all the things that you pray for, but what he's really seeking yes. is those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Those who will worship him because of who he is. Those who will worship him because you've fallen in love with him somewhere along the way. You found out, hallelujah, that can't nobody do you like Jesus, hallelujah. So even if it hurts right now, I know that nobody can do me like Jesus. Even if it don't look right right now, I know still nobody can do me like Jesus. So I keep seeking, but I'm not just seeking with my hand, I'm seeking with my life. I'm seeking with my heart. Lord, In verse 14, he says, I will be found. <laughs> Woo! I will be found by you. Yes, yes. When you seek me with your heart, yes, yes. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back yes. from your captivity. Yes. Let me talk just a minute to the backslider. Right. It does not matter if you've been gone a day, on, if you've been gone a month, right. if you've been gone a year, if you've been gone 70 years, he said, if you turn from your wicked way, if you seek me with your heart, he said, I will hear you, and I will bring you back, I will restore you, and I like the way God restores us, because it's like the 70 years never happened. Lord, I never lost a day in your presence. He restores completely. Thank you, Jesus. He said, I will gather you from all the nations, all the, the places, and the, the bars, and the strip clubs, and the, and the gambling. 
from all the places where you have been hanging out, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place before you were carried in exile. I will bring you back to me. I will bring you back to right relationship with me when you learn to seek me. Yes, Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, God. If my people yes, Lord. who are called by my name mm -hmm. would humble themselves Hallelujah. and pray insert the NIV the, from the BIV, the Bright International Version. Two-way prayer. Two-way communication. Listen to me. Listen. Linda, listen. Listen. Linda, listen. Point to yourself and fill in your own name. Listen. Brian, listen. Listen. Brian, listen. See, when we learn to hear his voice, he'll take you to the places where your heart really desires. Let me break it down. Just give me three minutes. I'm out of your way. We don't know our heart's desires until we know him. That's why sometimes he's not answering. Mm. Because you're praying what you believe to be your heart's desire. I'm Gary, bring it home. I'm Gary, bring it home. Some of y'all looking at me a little strange. But Pastor, I know myself better than anybody else knows me. No, you don't. No, we don't. He knew you before you were you. Right. Right. And he knows you after you will cease to be you. Amen. Amen. He knew you before you was a twinkle, as they say. Mm -hmm. And your daddy's eye. He knew you before your mama rubbed on her, her belly and, and whispered to you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You knew his voice before you were even conceived. Hallelujah. 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 If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then will I hear from heaven. What is the desire? What do you mean, Pastor, that I don't know the desires? He says, seek his face. Seek his face. When our desire is turned to him, that's when we find out what our true desire is. See, right now, we, we live in a westernized culture. We live in Indianapolis, Indiana, in the 20, I believe it's the 21st century. Yeah, the 21st century. And we are surrounded by all kind of gods. Yes, yes. We're surrounded by all kind of distractions. We're surrounded by all kind of things that make us think what we desire. All right. We didn't know we desired it until we saw it on television. We didn't know we desired it uh -huh. until we came across our Facebook page. We didn't know we desired it until uh -huh. somebody uh, sent it on kick or whatever those things are called. We did not even know we desired it. I was, I was sharing with some of my classmates the other day, and, and, and I did not wait. And young people, I advise you because I wish I would have waited until I was married before I became sexually active. Uh -huh. But I did not wait. But here's the thing, here's the thing. Let me just be honest with you and real with you. Amen. Before my first sexual encounter, I did not desire sex. I was curious. I had a curiosity. I saw images that made me curious about it. But after I had sex the first time, my body began to long for it. There's certain things that are presented to you in our culture. There are certain things that are presented to you through television, in your schools, even through other friends. I said, you don't have no natural desire for that stuff. Because your heart is in the right place. And you're seeking first the kingdom of God. 
to hear his voice. When you learn to hear his voice, he'll put you in a safe zone. He'll put you in a place because of the attacks will still come. Life is still going to happen. The liars are still going to lie. The whoremongers are still going to whoremong. The backbiters are still going to bite at your back. Amen. The murders are still going to be out to kill you. He's not removing that, but he is putting you in position. He's putting you in place. If you don't believe me, turn in your word to the 91st Psalm. Hallelujah. He that dwells in the what is that secret place? That secret place of the Most High God. The secret place is where the noise and the distraction that become few, and I'm able to hear His voice. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. Of darkness. Yes. Now it does not have to be dark outside, but it is a dark situation. Yes, yes. Amen. Terror comes when somebody comes to school or comes in your neighborhood and they and they bring a weapon you didn't think they had. That is a terror situation. That yes. is a dark situation. But when you're in communication with God, I'm a witness. God will yes. whisper to you and tell you which way to go. Yes, right. God will tell you exactly what to do in a terrifying situation. You don't have to be afraid of the terror. Yes. Yes. Nor by the ones who are bold enough to do it in the day. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid of bullies. You don't have to be afraid of bullies. You don't have to be afraid of child molesters. You don't have to be afraid of murderers. You don't have to be afraid of anything because God is providing his shadow. Hallelujah. His shadow. What does that mean? That means where you walk. He's walking. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Where you talk, you, he's talking. Yes. Hallelujah. His shadow is covering you. Hallelujah. Amen. You're not exposed to certain things that others will be exposed. Right. They could be in the same situation you're in, but you're not exposed to the same terror that they're exposed to yes. because you are dwelling under the shadow yes. of the Almighty. Yes. Learning yes. to hear his voice. If you can stand all over the place. Listen, Linda, listen, listen, Linda, listen, Robert, listen, Sue, listen, Stephanie, listen, Elmo. I've been trying to get a word in for a long time. But you treat me like you treat everybody else in your life. You ignore them, and then you over talk them. But this morning, I'm calling you to another level. I'm calling you to true communication. How many want to hear God? Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Hallelujah. 
How many want to hear him more often? Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Than what you hear him now. It starts by simply listening. Listening. Listening requires getting away from some things. Most of us have the ability to steal away to a quiet corner. You've seen the, the movie, The War Room. She stole away to the closet where there weren't any distractions. They say, Pastor, I'm surrounded by distraction all the time. I live in a house with 85 other people. And every room has at least 10 in it at a time. You may even on a 27 degree day have to put on your coat and your hat, wrap up in your scarf and put your gloves on and go sit outside by yourself. God has allowed you a place to escape from the noise, from the distractions. I mean, you know, we got a lot of distractions. Each year we get that. Had a pastor testify to me yesterday. He said that he and his wife have been married almost a year, and a big distraction in their marriage and with his kids has been his PlayStation, no, his Xbox. So he went yesterday, yesterday morning, and donated his Xbox because his marriage and his family was that important to him. Amen. 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 But here's the trick of the enemy. He said as soon as he got rid of the Xbox. The enemy still knew his taste and desires. An app popped up on his phone. Yeah. That he could play the same game. Wow. <laughs> and so, <laughs> he had to. He didn't get rid of his phone. But what he did was erase the app. And he said, I have to discipline myself right. to erase the app. Yeah. Young people, because this is Young People's Sunday, you have more distractions today than we've ever had. Right. And it seems like I know what my daughters, as soon as I get on one social media and start following them and figure something out, they didn't come out with nothing other that I don't know nothing about. Always something new. New technologies. New things to distract us. And anything that distracts you from spending time with God becomes a God. Pastor, that's kind of harsh. You know, it's the truth. Anything that takes your focus and attention away from God becomes your God. And we can't hear his voice because we're hearing the voices of so many gods. But this morning, I want to challenge you to tune in to channel 100. Tune in to channel 100, whatever your channel 100 is. Whatever that space you need to all by yourself, whatever that place, whatever that time of day it is. Some of us is early in the morning, some of us is late at night. Some of us is in the middle of the day. Some of us, as we talked about even in Bible studies, is taking a walk through the park, just hearing the birds tweeting and, and things that just brings you at peace and calm. Some of us, it's other things. We all have different pathways that we are, are allowed to gain access to God. But take time this week to get in that secret place and learn to hear his voice. If you receive it this morning, just say praise God. Praise God.